Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's coverage of CNCF's KubeCon EU, Cloud Native Con in Valencia, Spain. I'm John Furrier. This is a preview interview with the co-chairs versus we have Jasmine James, Senior Engineering Manager and of Developer Experience and KubeCon, Cloud Native Con EU co-chair and Ricardo Rocha, Computing Engineer at CERN and KubeCon co-chair as well at EU. Great to have you both on. Great to see you, both of you. Hey, to be here. Thank you, So, you know, KubeCon just continues to roll and get bigger and bigger. Um, and watching all the end user action, watching the corporations, enterprises come in, and just all the open source projects being green lit and just all the developer onboarding has been amazing. So, it should be a great EU in Valencia, Spain, great venue. A lot of people I never, I'm talking to are very excited. So, let's get into it. Uh, as co chairs, uh, take us through kind of the upcoming schedule at a very high level. Then, I want to dig into uh, some of the new insights into selection and program programming that you guys had to go through. I know every year it's hard. So let's start with the overall upcoming schedule for KubeCon. Yeah, so I'll dive into that. So the schedule is represents a quite a diverse set of topics, I would say. Um, I personally am a fan of those, you know, more personal talks from an end user perspective. There's also a lot, of the, a lot of the representation from a community perspective and how folks can get involved. Um, as most of you know, like our tracks, the types of tracks has evolved over the year as well. So we now have a community track, student track. So it's going to be very exciting to hear content within those tracks um, through in Valencia. So a very exciting schedule. Um, yeah. And just real quick for the folks watching, it's virtual and physical, it's hybrid event, May 4th through 7th. Ricardo, what's your take on the schedule? Uh, how do you see it breaking down from a high level standpoint? Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. Um, I think the, the fact that it's hybrid will help keep um, build on the experiences we had uh, during the pandemic times to, to give a better experience for people not making uh, it to Valencia. I'm pretty excited also about the number of co-located events. So the two days before the conference will include a, um, a large number of co-located events focusing on security, GitOps, uh, and some new stuff for like batch and HPC workloads that I'm pretty close to as well. Uh, and then some some really good consolidation in some tracks like this value, which I think will be quite quite interesting as well. So you mentioned this is going to be like watch parties, people are going to be creating kind of satellite events. Is that what you're referring to? Uh, in terms of the physical space community of event, obviously. Um, what's going on around outside the event, either online or as part of the program? So yeah, uh, the, the, all the sessions uh, from, from the co-located events will be available virtually as well. I don't know if people will actually be setting up parties everywhere. <laughs> I'm sure some people will. Yeah, there'll definitely be some. Uh, and then for 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 the conference itself, there will be dedicated rooms where for the virtual talks, uh, people can just join in and sit for a while and watch the virtual talks and then go back to the in-person ones uh, when they feel like. Yeah, it's always a good event. Uh, Jasmine, we talked about this last time and Ricardo, we always get into the hood as well. What's the vibe on the the the, the programming, and obviously people want to get, give talks. There's a virtual component which opens up more aperture uh, for more community and more actions as, as Ricardo pointed out. What's, what was the process this year? Because we're seeing a lot of big trends emerge. Obviously security is front and center, um, end user projects are growing. Data engineering is a new persona that's just really emerged out of kind of the growth of data and the role of data that it plays in containers and, and with Kubernetes, just a lot of action. What's the, what was it like this year in the selection process for the program? Yeah, I mean, the selection process is always lots of fun for the co-chairs. Um, huge shout out to program committee, track chairs, who put in a lot of great work in reviewing talks and, and it's just a very, very thorough process. So kudos to all of us for getting through it for this year. I think that Lots of things emerge, but I still feel like security is top of mind for a lot of folks. Like security is really has provided one of the biggest um, submissions is from, from a quantity perspective. There are tons of talks submitted for a security track and that just kind of speaks for itself, right? This is something that the cloud native community cares about and there's still a lot of innovation and people want to voice what they're doing and share it. Ricardo, what's your take? We've had a lot of chats around not only some of the <laughs> hardcore tech, but some of the new waves that are emerging out of the growth, the matures, maturization of, of, of the segment. What are you seeing uh, as terms of like the, the key things that came out during the, the process? Yeah, exactly. So I think 
And I would highlight something that Jasmine said, which is the the emergency uh, emergence of some new tracks as well. Uh, she mentioned the st student track, but also we added the research track, which is actually the first time we'll have it. So I'm pretty excited about that, of course. Uh, then for the trends, clearly security, observability are uh, massive. The tracks for updev operations, uh, extending Kubernetes had also a lot of submissions. Um, I think the, the main things I saw that uh, kind of uh, gain a bit of more consistency is the part for the business value and uh, the, the, the fact that people are now looking more at the second step, like uh, managing cloud costs, uh, how to optimize uh, spot usage and uh, usage of GPUs for machine learning, things like this. So I'm pretty excited and all these hybrid deployments also is something that keeps coming back. So those were are the ones that uh, um, I, I think came out from, from, from the submission this time. You know, it's interesting as the growth comes in, you see these cool new things happen, but there are also signs of problems that need to be solved to create opportunities. Jasmine, you mentioned security. Um, there's a lot of big trends, scale. Ricardo, you're kind of hinting at the scale piece of it, but there's all this now new things. The security posture changes uh, as you shift left. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not over when you shift left in security at the, in, in the pipelining there. But it's there's audits. There's the size of uh, the security elements. Uh, there's a bill of materials now. People looking at supply chain. These are huge conversations right now in the industry. Supply chain, security, um, scale, data, uh, optimization, management, uh, notifications. All this is building, building into a whole nother level. What do you guys see in the key trends in the cloud native ecosystem? I, I would say that a lot of the key trends, like you said it, right? These things are not going anywhere. It's actually coming to a point of maturation. Um, I see more of a focus on how consuming, how, how companies go about consuming these different capabilities. What is that experience like? There's a talk that's going to be offered um, as a keynote um, just about that security and leveraging developers to scale security within your environment. And not only is it a tool, problem, it's a mindset thing that you have to be able to get over and partner, bridge gaps between teams in order to make this um, a reality within within um, people, within certain organizations. So I see the experience part of it um, coming a big, a big thing. Um, and there's multiple talks about that. Ricardo, what's your take on these trends? Because I look at the, 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 the paragraph of the projects now, it's like this big. It used to be like a couple sentences, now you got more projects coming on. You got the rookies in there and you got the, the veterans, the veteran projects in there. So this speaks volumes to kind of things like notaries new, right? So this is cool. Wait, what does that mean? So, okay, security auditing, all this is happening. What are, the, what are the big trends that you're excited about that you see that people are going to be digging in in, in, the, in, in, in the event? Yeah, I think we, we, we talked about supply chain just before. I think that's that's a big one. We, we saw a, a keynote back in North America already introducing this, and we saw a lot of consolidation happening, not only in projects, but also companies supporting these projects. Um, I'm also quite interested, interested in the evolution of Kubernetes in the sense that it's not just for what was it, it was traditionally used for, like traditional IT services and scaling. We start seeing there will be a very cool keynote from, from deploying uh, Kubernetes at the edge, but really at the edge with the low Earth orbit satellites running Kubernetes in basically uh, space. So the, those things I think are, are very cool. Like we start seeing really a lot of consolidation, but also people looking at Kubernetes for, for pretty crazy things, which is very exciting. Yeah, you mentioned, you mentioned space, that really takes us to a whole edge, another level of edge thinking. Um, you know, I've had many conversations around how do you do break fix in space with some folks in, in the space industry and in public sector. Software is key in all this. And again, back to open source, open source has to be secure, it has to be able to manage effectively. It needs to be optimized into the new workflows. Space is one of them. You know, you see in um, 5G edge is huge. Uh, with new kind of apps that are being built there. So open source plays a big role in all this. So the, the question I want to ask you guys is, as open source continues to grow and it's growing, we're seeing startups emerge with the playbook of you, you play in open source or you actually create a project and then you get funding behind it because I know at least three or four VCs here in Silicon Valley that look at the projects and say, they're looking for deals and they're saying, keep it open a whole nother level. Can you guys share your insights on how the ecosystem's uh, evolving with entrepreneurship and, and startups? 
Uh, I guess I'll start. Um, I think that it's such a healthy thing um, to have such innovation occurring. Um, it's, it's really just a, a testament as to how the cloud native community, right, nurtures and cultivates these ideas and provides a great framework for them to develop over time, going from, you know, the sandbox and incubating and graduating and having the support of a solid framework, I think is a lot of the reason why a lot of these projects grow so quickly and reach certain these high levels of adoption. Um, so it's a really fantastic thing to see. I think that you know, VCs see an opportunity and, and, and there's a lot of great innovation that can be, you know, operationalized and scaled, right? Um, and applied to a lot of industries. So I feel it, I feel like it's a very healthy thing. Um, it also creates a lot of opportunities about something I'm passionate about, which is like, you know, people getting involved in open source as a step into the world of tech. Um, so all of these projects coming about provide an opportunity for folks to get involved in a particular component they're interested in and then grow their career in open source. So really great thing in my opinion. And you mentioned the student track, by the way, I kept to point that out. I mean, that's huge. That's going to be a lot of people who have, you know, in computer science programs or self-learning. I mean, the, the, the ability to get up to speed uh, from a development standpoint as a coder, um, you can be a raw comp sci or, uh, just a practitioner, just coding. I mean, data is everywhere. So data engineering, coding, I mean, Ricardo, this is huge student. And then just every sector is opening up. I mean, the color codes on the calendar is uh, larger than ever before. Yeah, I think, yeah, the, the diversity of the usage and the communities is, is something that is really important and it's been growing still. So I, I think this will not stop. Um, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty excited to see also how we'll handle this growth because as you mentioned, like everything is increasing in numbers, number of projects, number of startups around these projects. Uh, so one thing that I'm particularly interested on as an end user is to understand also how to help other end users that are jumping in, not only the, the developers or, or the people wanting to support these projects, but also the end users, how, to, how do they choose their stack? How, do, how, it's, how, how should it look like for their use cases? Much more than just going uh, from, from the selection of individual pro projects to understand how they, they work together. So I think this is a challenge for, for the next couple of years. Yeah, I mean, roll your own and building blocks, whatever you want to call it. You're starting to see people uh, build their own stacks and that's not a bad thing. It might be a feature, not a bug. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think it's something that we have to work on uh, together to, to, to help, especially people starting in this ecosystem, but also for, for the experienced ones that start looking at other use cases as well. Okay, Jasmine, we talked about this last time. You got to pick a favorite uh, child in the, in the, in the agenda. Uh, what's your favorite session? Um, and you got to pick one or three, or maybe put a handful. Um, as you guys look through this year, what's the theme? I mean, people, like, you can kind of sense what's happening uh, when you look at the agenda, obviously the observability's in there, all these great stuff's in there, but what's, the, what's your favorite um, uh, project or topic this year that uh, you're jazzed about? For me, I, I said there's such diverse um, topics that are being presented both on the keynote stage and throughout um, the various tracks. I will just reference um, the talk that I, I sort of alluded to earlier about um, leveraging developers to scale Kubernetes. Um, it's a talk given by Red Hat on the keynote stage. Um, I just think it, you know, the abstract sold in me because it talks about bridging two different worlds together um, and scaling what we all know to be so important within the cloud native space, security and Kubernetes. So it's something that's very like real for me um, in, in my current role and previous role. So I think that that's the one that spoke to me. Awesome, Ricardo, what's your favorite uh, this year? What do you, what do you uh, if you had to put a little gold star on something that you're interested in, what it would have been? I think I hinted on, on it just before, which is uh, I'm, I'm kind of a space enthusiast. So all, all this idea of running Kubernetes in space uh, makes me very excited. So <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that one. But as an end user, I'm also very interested in talks uh, like the one Mercedes will be doing, which is the transition from a kind of a more traditional company to this uh, uh, yeah. more modern world of uh, cloud native. And I'm quite interested to hear how, how what their experience has been has been like in the last few years. Well, you guys do a great job. I love chatting with you and I love uh, CNCF and following from the beginning. We were there when it was, when it was created and watched it grow from an insider perspective, the hyperscalers, people who are really kind of eating glass and building scale, you know, SREs. Now you have, 
you have the SRE concept going kind of global, mainstream, seeing enterprises, and end users contributing and participating enterprises, getting connecting those two worlds, Jasmine, as you said. As you look at that, you start to see the scale piece become huge. You mentioned it a little bit earlier, uh, Jasmine. The SRE role was specific to servers and cloud. You're kind of seeing that kind of role needed for this kind of cloud native layer. We're seeing it with data engineering. It's not for the faint of heart. It may not be a persona that's got zillions of people, but it scales. It's like an SRE role. And you're seeing that with this kind of monitoring and, and with containers and Kubernetes, where it's got to get easier and scale. How do you guys yeah. see that? Do you see that emerging in the community, this, this kind of new scale role? And um, what is it? What is this trend? Or maybe I'm misrepresenting it or maybe I'm sensing it wrong, but what do you guys think about the scale piece? How is that falling into place? Yeah, I, I think that as um, adoption, like or there's more saturation of, of cloud native technologies within any environment, um, most in, most companies realize that you have to have that represented right within the role that is managing it. Um, if you want to have it be reliable, um, so I think that a lot of roles are adopting those behaviors, right, in order to be able to sustain this within their environment and learning as they start to implement these things. Um, so I see that to be something that just happens. Um, we saw it with like DevOps, right? You know, engineers were starting to adopt you know, working on the systems versus just, you know, working on software. Um, so it's sort of like encompassing all the things, right? We're, we're seeing a shift in the role and, and the behaviors that are within it in order to maintain these cloud native services, so. Ricardo, what's your take? We've been seeing engineers get to the front lines more and more. Uh, you guys mentioned business value as one of the tracks and uh, focus topics this year. It's happening, engineers and developers, they're getting in the front lines because as you move up that stack, whether it's a headless system for retail or deploying something in another sector, they got to be in the front lines. If you're going to be doing machine learning and have data, you got to have domain scales about what the business is, right? Yeah, I, I agree very much with what Jasmine said. And, and uh, if we add this for, for kind of the business value and the, this opportun opportunistic usage of uh, all types of resources that can come from basically anywhere these days, I think this is, this is really becoming um, a, a real role to, to understand how, how to best uh, use all of this and uh, to, to make the best of all these available resources. When we start talking about uh, CPUs, it's already important. If we start talking about GPUs, which are more scarce or some sort of specialized accelerators, then, then it becomes really like something that uh, you, you need people that know where, where to go and fish for those. Because they, they, you can't just build your own data center and, and scale that anymore. So you, you really need to understand what's out there. Applications got to have the security posture nailed down. They got to have it automation built in. You got to have the observability. You got to have the business value. I mean, it sounds like a mature industry developing here. Finally, it's happening. Good job, guys. Thanks for coming on the Cube. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. And we'll see theCUBE here at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, May 16th to the 20th in Valencia, Spain. The Cube will be there. We'll have some online coverage as well. Look for the virtual from CNCF. The Cube will bring all the, all the action. I'm John Furrier, your host. See you in Spain and see you on the 16th.